What's good, YouTubers and YouTube X? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Don't talk about Manny Pac Man Pacquiao. What's going to be his next opponent after uh, winning a very exciting and a very competitive competitive uh, split decision over Keith One Time Thurman? And I and I'm I'm looking at three possible opponents. First of all, you know, there was been some rumors right after the fight. They were saying, well. Maybe they make the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather Jr. rematch. That fight's not happening, folks. Floyd has stated, he stated right after the fight that he's happily retired. He's not looking to get back in the ring and fight professionally. You know, he's looking at maybe going back over there to uh, Japan and do do some more exhibition fights and make some quick, easy money over there. Three round exhibitions fighting, the, you know, some Asian fighters over there. That's what he's looking to do. He's not looking to uh, get back in the ring and fight professionally no more. Uh, Leonard Ellaby, second that. Second those thoughts and said, you know, Florida's happily retired. You know, he was at the fight being, you know, he had his promoter promoter hat on at the fight. I know a, people, a lot of people see him at the fight, see him get in the ring, and they automatically assume, oh, man, Floyd, he's coming back, man. He's looking at he's looking at uh, fighting the winner of this fight. And, you know, and especially if it's Pacquiao, they can make a whole lot of money. But they don't know that, you know, Floyd Mayweather was promoting the fight. That fight was under Floyd Mayweather's promotions. You know, Lily Ellaby was there, too. He's the CEO of uh, Floyd Mayweather's promotion. That's why he was at the fight. Floyd doesn't have any intentions of coming back, folks. But let's, let's look at uh, realistic opponents for uh, Manny Pacquiao. The first, I got three opponents. The third opponent I'm looking at, is, to me, is a long shot. That's Amir Khan. That, you know, Amir Khan stated after he beat Billy Dibbs, in a uh, circus fight over there in Saudi Arabia that uh, he, him and the man had already signed to fight, I think, November the 8th in Saudi Arabia. Where it got back to uh, Manny Pacquiao when he was uh, getting ready for the Keith Thurman fight in L.A., and he said his first time heard, he first time hearing that. He basically said, that's first time, basically, basically, I'm paraphrasing. He said, it's the first time I've heard of that. You know, I don't know what Amir Khan's talking about, but I haven't signed to fight anybody. I'm focused on uh, July the 20th, and I'm focused on... Uh, fighting and beating uh, Keith Thurman. That's basically what he said. So, uh, and it, the word got back to Amir Khan. Amir Khan was like, well, you know, I signed my, I signed on the dollar line, and I think Manny's, uh, Manny's signed on the dollar line. I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe his people uh, hasn't informed him or this and that. You know, basically, uh, basically, he was trying to kind of like backtrack, but at the same time saying that he signed and Manny signed, but maybe Manny don't know, or maybe, I don't know, maybe he was saying his, he signed, and maybe Manny people informed him, or Manny people told him that uh, you know after uh, Manny beats Keith that he will uh, be interested in a fight. You know, you know what I'm saying you're gonna be interested in a fight and signing is two different things. Bottom line is Manny Pacquiao hasn't signed anything to fight uh, Amir Khan. So let's get this straight: Amir Khan fighting Billy Dibbo in Saudi Arabia. You know you had some investors in Saudi Arabia put up some money for that fight, but that's that's a uh, that's not a big fight. That's a, uh, you know, you dragged uh, Billy Dibb up from what, he was a, he's originally what, 126 pounder? He was a 130 pounder, I think. Uh, no, nah, he was 135 pounder, but he started at 126, but I think his last fight was at lightweight. You know, you had heard rumors about um, Adrian Broner before the, uh, Amir Khan said, you know, followed him. You was hearing rumors about Adrian Broner fighting, uh, fighting, uh, no, no, my bad. No, 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 I'm getting him mixed up. I'm getting him mixed up with Selby. I'm getting them mixed up with Selby. But Billy Dill was a small guy coming up in weight. A small guy coming up in weight. And uh, it's one thing for the Saudi Arabia investors to put up money for that small-scale fight. But for a Manny Pacquiao and Khan fight, you know, Manny Pacquiao made $20 million guaranteed for Keith Thurman. With the pay-per-view, he might have made up $30, $35 million when you add it all up. He's not, you know, so you, so it's one thing for the Saudi Arabia. Say the Saudi Arabia had to come up with maybe, I say maybe $5 million. You know, they had to come up with five million for Amir Khan versus Billy Dib. You know, you know, Billy uh Amir Khan probably got four and a half and they paid uh Billy Dib five hundred thousand basically to come over there and get whooped. You know, that's one thing to come up with five million, but now you got to come up with uh with for, for Amir Khan, you know, he's gonna want at least ten and then Pacquiao gonna want at least uh thirty. So you're gonna have to, you, I mean uh Saudi Arabia investors gonna have to come up with forty million, you know, for that fight. And um, if, if they're able to come up with $40 million for that fight, I, I got one question to ask uh, Saudi Arabia. Why y'all haven't had uh, other big fights? If you can come up with $40 million for, for Manny Pacquiao versus Mir Khan, you should have had, a, you know, you should have came up with money for Mir Khan to fight other fighters. You could have came up with money for Mir Khan to fight. Uh, you could have bid it on a Mir Khan versus uh, Canelo. I know, a Can you know, I know that fight wouldn't end up in Saudi Arabia. It was going to Las Vegas because Canelo and Golden Boy was calling the shots, and they, and that's that's basically Canelo's second home is uh. 
for big fights is Las Vegas. But you could have bid it on that fight. You know, he's a, he's a, he's the, you know, Amir Khan is, you know, a Muslim, you know, an Arab, and he's a, you know, basically a, a native son. You could have put up the money for that fight. You could have put the money for a lot of Amir Khan big fights. You know what I'm saying? When he fought um, Terrence Crawford, you could have bid on that fight. Or when he fought uh, Danny Garcia, you could have bid on that fight. So, you know, if, what I'm saying is it, it's hard for me to believe that Saudi Arabia will come up with $40 million for, you know, that's what they at least they have to come up with, a $40 million for a Miracle and Manny Pacquiao fight when they've never done a big fight that I've known of. I've heard, I've seen other countries pr produce big fights, you know, countries in Africa, you know, Zaire, Africa, Muhammad Ali, George, former Rumble in the Jungle, you know, you've seen uh, Kingston, Jamaica, put on a big fight with uh, Joe Frazier. After he had beat Muhammad Ali, uh, he fought George Foreman. You know, you seen uh, Thrill in Manila, was in the Man uh, Manila, Philippines. Uh, Joe Frazier versus Muhammad Ali, the third fight. You know, other countries have shown. So if, if they, if those countries say they come up with some money and say, hey, we got, you know, we can, we can produce this fight, produce, I, I'd be more inclined to believe those, kind, those countries because they had a history of putting on big fights than Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has never put on a big fight. So all of a sudden, they're going to be able to put up the money for uh, Miracon versus uh, Manny Pacquiao. I doubt it. I doubt that very serious. That's why I look at. I put that as a uh, dark horse opponent. That's a third. That's a long shot. But that's the third. Third option. I think. The second option is uh, Earl Spence versus Sean Porter. The winner of that fight fight Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao stated right after the fight that uh, he's gonna take the rest of the year to focus on his senatorial duties and rest, and he'll be fighting next year. As you know, Manny Pacquiao fought uh, Asian Broner January nineteenth of two thousand and nineteen. So he fought, he fought there, and then he fought again July the 20th versus Keith Thurman. He says he's not going to fight again until next year. So I will bet that, that his uh, next fight will be uh, sometime middle to late January. So that's going to make it pretty hard for uh, – you look at Earl Spence and uh, Keith Thurman. They fight in late September. So they, they will have less than September. You got October, November, December, January. They will have around four months. Well, well basically – you, at the end of September, you just knock September out. You got October, November, December, January. They have uh, four months to get ready for that fight, which will be enough time. I think he, uh, Errol Spence and Sean Porter, both, if they come out, you know, pretty much with nothing, no, no big big time injuries or no significant injuries, where well, well, suspension will come into effect, like it did with Keith Furman after he uh, lost to Manny Pacquiao. He's uh, he's he's uh, he's, he's going to have to serve a sixty day procedural uh, suspension for before he able to uh, come back. But uh, I don't, you know, say they come unscathed, they will be able to, uh, you know, four months will be enough time for them to uh, come back and uh, fight Manny Pacquiao. You know, that, that could be a possibility. But, you know, if it's Errol Spence, man, that's a tough matchup. For, that's a bad matchup for uh, Manny Pacquiao. That guy's taller, longer reach, got a good jab, a pressure fighter, throws punches, don't get tired like Keith Thurman. Well, Keith Thurman didn't get tired, but he's a relentless fighter. He comes he comes with pressure, relentless. He don't have the one-punch knockout, but he th he just one of those pressure fighters that just breaks you down. He's like a... Uh, 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 guy chopping down a, a big, big, uh, big tree, man. Just keep, keeps chopping, keep chopping, keep chopping, keep chopping, and that eventually that uh, tree is gonna fall down. And that's what he would do with a Manny Pacquiao. I think that's a bad matchup, but that's probably the biggest money fight out there for Manny Pacquiao, uh, uh Errol Spence fight. But maybe he fights the winner of that. I put that number two. That would be a big time fight. They could have that at AT and T Stadium in Dallas. Uh, uh, maybe have that again in uh, T Mobile. Maybe they could put that fight at T Mobile. Uh, arena in Las Vegas, or maybe have that back at the MGM in uh, Grand in Las Vegas. They, that would be one of the two venues they're looking at for that fight. But that could be a possible fight. If Sean Porter is able to win that, a lot of people underestimate Sean Porter in this fight. I feel he's got a, he, it's a more competitive fight than people thinking. People thinking uh, uh, Errol Spence is going to watch Sean Porter. I don't see it playing out like that. But as we get close to that fight, I'll break that fight down in detail. But uh, maybe Sean Porter. If he fights Sean Porter, that fight would definitely have to be in uh, Las Vegas, you know, at the uh, MGM Grand or T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So that, that, that's the that's option he could look at. The number one option is uh, Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia was linked to a fight with uh, Mikey Garcia August 31st. That fell through. They got another call on that night. Uh, it won't be those two. Then uh, I, I had a source that, that was telling me that they was looking to make that fight. If they agreed to turn, they were looking to make that fight December 14th on Fox or Fox Pay-Per-View. But now we've been hearing that um, Mikey Garcia is in negotiations with Eddie Hearn and DAZN. 
You know, they they in advanced talks. It's nothing intimate right now. As uh, Michael Compton said in his uh on his website, it's nothing intimate, imminent, or nothing that's uh you know you know it's just uh you know they, it ain't like they dotting their eyes or crossing their t's, you know. And basically, it's a foregone conclusion. They're just uh, talking right now. I don't know what Mikey uh you know Eddie Hearn doesn't have a strong stable at one forty or uh, one forty seven. You know, I don't know what you know. He can maybe he can fight the Maurice Hooker, uh, 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 Jose Ramirez fight this coming Saturday in Dallas. But that's not a big fight. That's not a high profile fight. Or maybe you know, I don't know why. Uh, maybe he fight the pro the uh, Regis Regis Prograis versus Josh Taylor fight that's uh slated to take place uh at the end of this year. They're looking on the West Coast for that fight. But that's not a big fight. So I don't understand outside of a lot of money that uh, Eddie Hearn in the zone can throw it throw at uh Mikey a big bag. Why would he sign with the zone? But uh, reports are that he's signing, that, that he's uh, negotiating with uh, Eddie Hearn in the zone, and he was uh, not at this. Uh, well, he was not at the fight Saturday night. He was not at the Pacquiao uh, Thurman fight Saturday night. And that was interesting because he used to be at all the PBC fights, especially pay per view. He, was, he used to be at all. He, was, he used to be at all the fights, but he was he was notice, noticeably absent uh, from the Pacquiao Thurman fight. So that's interesting. So say that fight uh, doesn't happen, Danny Garcia is the. Uh, it's probably the number one option, I think, for uh, for uh, Manny Pacquiao. It's not the fight I want to see, but I'm just saying if I had to rate you know, what fight I think is going to happen next, I'm looking at this as percentages. What about fight do I predict happening next for Manny Pacquiao? That's what I'm saying. Don't get mad. Oh, man, you want to see him fight Danny Garcia? No, nah, I want to see him fight the winner of Errol Spence and Sean Porter. But I, I think they're number two on this top three options as far as next fights for uh, Manny Pacquiao. The number one option is Danny Garcia, Danny Swift Garcia. He's a guy that's flat-footed, you know, a guy that's got power in both hands, but he's a little bit flat-footed. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's a little bit, he's a little bit faster uh, when you, you know, than he shows on TV. You look on TV, or uh, you look, you're like, oh, man, this guy's slow. But when, you, when I know when fighters get in the ring with him, he's able to land his punches, and he's able to get off, get off his shots. Very good uh, left hook. You know, even though he's not, he say half time he has his eyes closed when he's throwing a left hook. But he, it don't matter if your eyes closed, your eyes wide open. He's able to connect on with that left hook a lot and, uh, and and knock out a lot of his opponents or hurt a lot of his opponents. So he's got a great left hook. You know, he's got a good right hand as he showed in the Granados fight. His right hand's got dynamite behind that too. So the guy's a good fighter, man. But it, it'll be a, a perfect opponent, as you heard in in recent years. Um, uh, Freddie Roach have said that they they want he's been he's always mentioning uh, he's been mentioning Danny Garcia as a possible uh, Manny Pacquiao opponent. Say man, that'd be a good fight for us. That's what Freddie Roach said. That'd be a good fight for us, man. I think I think he think that'll be a crowd pleasing fight, an uh, entertaining fight, a fight that uh you know a lot of people will want to see. It's a good stylistic matchup for Manny Pacquiao. It'll be a good pay per view fight. It'll be a fight that you know that you know will have to take place you know in Las Vegas. You know, like like the Porter fight, if it happens, it'd be it'd probably be at the MGM Grand or the T Mobile Arena, but it'd be a good fight. So I think I think with the Mikey Garcia fight not looking like it's gonna happen, I still think it's a chance, but you know, if he's negotiating with Eddie Hearn and uh he and every Hearn and Eddie Hearn offers him a big bag, maybe he goes over there. We'll see. But uh uh Danny Garcia is the uh number one option, I think, I feel for uh, Manny Pacquiao next fight, January of twenty twenty. I think it'll be Danny Garcia. It'll be a big pay-per-view fight. It's a good stylistic matchup as far as both guys. You got a guy that's going to come forward, bring pressure like Danny Garcia, going against a guy that's got great footwork, can move, throw, throw shots from uh, different angles, uh, throw shot, shots from awkward angles. I got uh, a good uh, straight left, a good jab, a good uh, right to the body, good left to the body, good combination fighter, and uh a guy, a guy that's very, very, very fast hands, a lot of speed behind his punches, fighting a guy that's out, that guy, that guy in Danny Garcia that has great timing, great timing, great timing fight. That's that's what beat speeds, great timing, and that's what Danny Garcia has. Like I said, great left hook, a great right hand, does 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 decent work to the body, and a guy that's not great at one thing, but is very good at a lot a lot of things. He's a good B level fighter, good B level fighter. You know, I kind of put him in the same boat as a Danny Jacobs. I'd probably give him a slight edge over Danny Jacobs, though. You know, he's just he's, his resume is better than Danny Jacobs. So I'd probably say uh, Danny Garcia. I, I say Jacobs is a good B-level fighter. I would say Danny Jacobs. I mean, I say Danny, Jac Danny Jacobs is a good B-level fighter. I'll say Danny Garcia is a good B-plus-level fighter. 
So uh, it'll be a good, good, a good, a good fight. You know, you you'll want to go in this fight. Well, that age finally show up for uh, Manny Pacquiao. He probably he might be 41 by the time that fight comes along. He'll be 41 or at least closer to 41 by the time that fight rolls around. And you'll be wondering was 40 well, will for the time tap him on the shoulder in that fight, and he become old overnight. And then we'll, you know, if that's the case, Danny Garcia is a brutal fighter, man. He's got power in his punch, power in both hands. He's got a, a, a conditioning coach that he didn't have. He had his father as, as his conditioning coach. Now he's got a professional conditioning coach that, as yeah, you showed up in the Granados fight, he looked. That's probably the best Danny Garcia we've seen since, uh, you know, since you know, since, in years, probably since uh, he was beating up uh, Mircon and uh, Morales and guys like that, putting those guys out of there. So uh, and beating up Luke, Luke, Lucas Matisse, probably the best he's, he's been since he probably fought Lucas Matisse. So uh, if he if he continues to uh, you know if he continues to uh, get in good shape and that conditioning coach get him at, get him at optimal optimal condition and fighting at a high level for long stretches, twelve rounds like he did uh, in the Granados fight. Well, the Granados fight didn't go long, but he was able to uh, come out. You know so he had been known Danny Garcia had been known as a slow starter in a lot of fights. He started out slow against Keith Thurman, dug himself a deep hole, came on in the second half of the fight, but. He dug himself too deep a hole. It wasn't able to close the uh, distance enough to win a decision. In this fight against Granados, he came out. He came out on fire. Came out ready to roll. So if he can continue to do that, come out real hot, and you know he gets stronger as the fight goes on, that that would be a good fight. Him and Pacquiao. You see, as you see, Pacquiao kind of faded in the second half of that fight. If he does that against uh, Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia might be able to, uh, you know, close, you know, be able to uh, take advantage of that. You know, and, and put that pressure on him and get the land in that left hook and overhand right and possibly uh, stop uh, Pacquiao. Pacquiao has a good chance or, or win a decision win a decision against Pacquiao. So we'll see what happens, man. But that's just my thoughts, man, on Manny Pacquiao's potential next opponent. Number one option, again, to me is Danny Garcia. The number two option is uh, the uh, Keith Thurman, my bad, the uh, Errol Spence Jr., Sean Porter winner. The option, which is a long shot, is fighting Amir Khan in Saudi Arabia because I just don't think the money's there for that for that for a fight of that magnitude. Like I said, it's one thing to put on a little small fight against Billy Deal. Maybe they, maybe you, maybe they need to uh, come up with uh, five million the Saudi Arabian investors for that fight. But uh, this fight against um, Manny Pacquiao, they would have to come up with ten times uh, at least ten times uh, more money than they came up with for that uh, for that fight. They got a lot of money down there in Saudi Arabia. They got a lot of oil money, but they're not used to putting that type of money in no fight. They they used to lining their pockets up, you know, saying the Royal Kingdom and the and the, the Prince and all the people down there in the, uh, the Saudi or, or royal family, they like to line their pockets up. They don't like to throw money behind no event, you know, you know that they uh, not absolutely sure if they're going to get a, a huge return on. You know, they usually line in their pockets up. I mean, they would have to put up a lot of money, a lot of their own money for that fight. Or maybe they, like I say, maybe they, maybe the investors can come up with with the uh, money, but I doubt it because if that was the case, they would have had a big fight over there by now. You know, I, like I said, I mentioned all these other countries that had a big fight, and Saudi Arabia had, in the history of boxing have never p put on a, a huge mega fight. And it's, you know, you wonder why because they got a lot of money with that oil money. They got you think they have a lot of money in these other countries, but these other countries. Even though it was a long time ago, you can say, oh, that's back in the 70s, JB Sports. They still got a history of coming up with the money for big fights. Them, those fights, even back then, were big money fights. Ali, Frazier 3, Thrill in Manila. Ali Foreman, Roman and Jung and Zaya Africa. You know, uh, George Foreman, Joe Frazier in Kingston, Jamaica. Jamaica, you know, Jamaica used to be the place to go on vacation. And, you know, come back to Jamaica. You know that? Remember that? Come back to Jamaica. There ain't no more come back to Jamaica commercial no more. Ain't no money over there, but they had money back then with the commercial. They had a lot of tourists, but a lot of people getting over, over there getting stabbed and stuff over there, getting stabbed, knifed up over there. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, crime was going on over there, and, and, and Jamaica ain't the place to, to be uh, like it used to be. So they fell off a little bit, but back then they had some money, man. They had some money, man. They was able to come up with the big fight for... Uh, for uh, Joe Frazier versus uh, George Foreman, that was you know yeah, that put George Foreman on the map as far as uh, great heavyweight you know dominant heavyweights. So we'll see what happens, man. Just just my two cents on it, man. And I'm about to get up out of here, man. Just giving you a quick thoughts on uh, Manny Pacquiao's uh, next opponent, and we'll see we'll see what happens in the uh, coming weeks, man. What Manny Pacquiao decides. Well, I, I say the coming weeks. I don't think Manny Pacquiao is going to side in the coming weeks. It, it'll probably be uh, sometime after the Errol Spence uh, Sean Porter fight. 
you know, maybe sometime around there, maybe Manny Pacquiao shows up at that fight, attends that fight, and then you maybe he'll he'll he'll, he'll make a decision uh, sometime in uh, you know, October who he's gonna fight. You know, we'll see what happens. This is JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend. I holler.